It's hard to believe that the M4 Mac Mini has been my main editing computer for the past six months. I originally bought the computer somewhat as a joke because I just wanted to use it as a server computer as the new M4 Mac Mini was really small and really powerful. My experience with Apple Silicon was pretty good up to that point using the M1 MacBook Air as my main travel laptop and then upgrading to an M3 Pro MacBook Pro. I knew Apple Silicon was really great, but when I first got the M4 Mac Mini, I immediately realized how powerful the machine machine was, and it quickly replaced my 2020 iMac as my main computer for editing videos, productivity, streaming, music, pretty much everything as my office computer. Now, over the past six months, my workflow with the M4 Mac Mini has changed. So in this video, I want to go over how I've used the M4 Mac Mini over the past six months, what's changed. I've done a few different reviews on the M4 Mac Mini, so this is going to be more of a report of what has been going on the past three months since my last video. I have a whole M4 Mac Mini playlist that have reviews showing you how to edit 6K footage from cameras like the Red Komodo, the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K that we're filming with. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check the M4 Mac Mini playlist after this video. But I just wanted to let you know that this isn't going to be a proper review because this computer's been out for a while. I think if you're watching this video, you probably know enough about it, then you want to see how this thing has performed long term. Now, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Jeff Fagan. I'm a filmmaker and content creator, and on this channel, I talk a lot about my love of tech and how it relates to making video content and relates in my life on a daily basis. So if you're into that, make sure to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. So yeah, six months later with the base model M4 Mac Mini, I can confidently say it's still the best value Mac you can buy in 2025. Since my three month review, I've upgraded the internal SSD to two terabytes with a third party kit. I've switched permanently to a three monitor editing workflow. Now it's not the most professional looking workflow because again, I bought this thing kind of as a joke. So I ended up using different monitors as my three different monitors, but it works really well for my workflow. And I really don't plan on updating anytime soon because for the money, I can't really beat the kind of value I'm getting right now. Then I also added a Thunderbolt 4 hub from OWC that lets me hot swap between my M4 Mac Mini, my laptops, and even my Asus ROG Ally X just with one cable, and I can fully control all the computers at once. It's very simple, makes it very easy to use many computers at once. So just a quick recap of the base specs. The M4 Mac Mini is $599 has a 10-core CPU, 10-core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, three Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI 2.1, two front USB-C ports, an Ethernet jack, a headphone jack, and it's all in a 5x5x2-inch box. Now, comparing to the M4 MacBook Air, you get more ports, you get more performance, and of course, you get no thermal throttling in the M4 Mac Mini. And I'll discuss the M4 MacBook Air. I do use that computer a lot, but I pretty much never use it when I'm here in the home studio. I'm always using the Mac Mini. That's why I say for the price, you can't really beat the value this machine gives you because I could just walk in and start working. I don't have to hook up anything. I only hook up other devices to my Thunderbolt hub when I have specific use cases, like if I want a video game on the ROG Ally X, or I have a more intensive export that I need the beefier GPU of my M3 Pro MacBook Pro. So three months ago, I replaced Apple's 256 gig drive that comes standard on the base model with a two terabyte third-party MVME that cost around 280 bucks. But it costs $800 from Apple if you wanna upgrade to a two terabyte drive from them out of the gate. So the savings is great. And I was also able to use the machine at a very affordable price and then upgrade when I had the money to do so. And so that's one of the things that I would recommend if you're interested in doing this upgrade, you don't have to do it off the bat. While I had the 256 gig drive, I was able to make it work, but I did have to memory manage a lot. And I always use an external drive. So all of my documents, even to today with upgrading my internal drive are still on an external drive. The difference is I was having to memory manage. I only kept around 120 gigs on the 256 gig drive. I wanted to always keep more than 50% of the drive available, where now I'm only taking like 220 gigs of that drive. So I don't even need the two terabytes, but I don't have to memory manage at all. And I still have everything on an external SSD. The early kits seem to be a bit iffy with the quality, but vendors seem to have ironed out reliability. So if you're willing to open up your M4 Mac mini, you can save a ton of money. You just have to be careful because if you damage anything, you can potentially void your warranty. 
Besides storage anxiety, the other real world gain is the fact that file transfers are a lot quicker on this drive because the read and the write speeds are slightly faster than the base 256 gig drive. And it does make a difference if you're pushing raw files like from cinema cameras like the Red Komodo, etc. When it comes to how I connect my keyboard, my mouse, my external media, I actually use that Thunderbolt 4 hub to not only hook up two of my three monitors to the M4 Mac Mini, but I also use it to hook up one of my tape based drives, my keyboard, my mouse even my card reader all through the Thunderbolt 4 hub. That way, if I need to hook up my laptop, Asus Rally X, whatever, I know I keep saying that, I can do so, and it's just one cord, and I get access to almost my desktop setup, just missing one monitor. But that's another benefit of the M4 Mac Mini. The fact that you can use three monitors on this base level machine. You can't do that on the M4 MacBook Air. You can't do that on really any of the other base model computers. You really need M4 Max chip in the current M4 lineup. So, you know, the price difference between an M4 Max chip and the base level M4 Mac Mini or even the base model M4 Mac Mini Pro it's a huge difference. So you get, oh, again, a lot of value. That's why I keep saying this is the best value computer just for what you get. And it is a desktop. So the main thing is if you're okay with a desktop like I am as my home computer, then you get a lot of value. But if you need portability, that's where the M4 MacBook Air starts to come in because it obviously can charge on a 30 watt charger. You can also use a less wattage charger and just charge the battery. It has great battery life. There is no battery life on the M4 Mac Mini. So they're almost marketed at different users. So why do I use three screens? Well, it has to do mostly with editing video. So my monitor all the way on the right, I use as my full screen preview when I'm editing. So I can see everything, all the videos I'm editing in full screen. Then the middle monitor I use for my timeline. I leave my timeline up, it's in full screen, and I'll just look to the right of me when I need to actually do my color grades because that is the more color accurate monitor of the three that I have. And I could see it in full screen. I could see it in full quality, and it's just a lot easier to cut up edits. Then my monitor all the way on the left is used for productivity while editing, whether I'm putting up emails or putting up videos, pictures, things I need to reference while editing. That's what the third monitor does for me all the way on the left. And that's why I've pretty much been forced at home to use three monitors for editing and it helps my workflow a lot quicker. And that's what I hope I can help you with today. By seeing my workflow, maybe you can figure out if the M4 Mac Mini is enough for you or you need to upgrade to a higher end machine. But 99% of people who are watching this and if you're questioning if the M4 Mac Mini is enough for you, most likely it is. The only thing I would say when it comes to editing is I'm not editing feature films on this machine. I am editing podcasts, YouTube videos, social media content. Okay, so editor Jeff here. As I was editing this video, I completely forgot to mention the fact that the Apple TV show Severance actually did a whole behind the scenes video talking about why they use the M4 Mac Mini along with the M4 iMac and the M4 MacBook Pro as their main editing machines on this Apple TV show, which is a huge hit show right now that used base level M4 chips on production and they specifically highlighted the M4 Mac Mini because they sent multiple editors and producers the Mac Mini to be able to view the timelines. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below because you should totally check this video out if you're interested in severance and also interested to see how they use the M4 Mac Mini in this editing workflow on their set. And so a lot of the people who are out there giving advice, oh, you know, the M4 Mac Mini isn't enough for this, that, they're not thinking about the majority of people who, if they're editing videos and they're looking for an M4 Mac Mini, you may be putting stuff on YouTube or Instagram, whatever it may be, and you don't need to spend all this money on a high-end computer when a $600 machine could do it for you for almost the same performance level as buying this higher-end machine because of your workflow, not because the machine machine is any more or less capable. Most of the time, the M4 Mini will be less capable than the higher end machines. But again, you may not need all that extra raw power. Now, as you've probably seen on my monitors, I use DaVinci Resolve to edit video, and that's what I use to edit my 6K RAW video, my 10-bit footage from cameras like the Sony FX30, Osmo Pocket 3. It works really well on Apple Silicon. I did a whole video showing you how to set up your M4 Mac Mini 
to properly handle 6K footage if you're going to use a lot of effects or anything that may bog down the computer while editing at full 4K resolution. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's also in my M4 Mac Mini playlist, but I highly recommend watching it. So if you're editing with higher end cameras like this, and again, you're not necessarily doing feature films or TV shows, you can make this computer work for you. You just have to change some of the settings in DaVinci. And then of course, while editing, the main thing I don't have on the M4 Mac Mini that I do get, unfortunately, on the M4 MacBook Air, which is why I had to do that old thermal pad mod thing, is thermal throttling. There's a big fan that I pretty much never hear in the M4 Mac Mini, and it keeps it from thermal throttling. And it's also part of the reason, besides the fact that it has the full 10-core CPU, 10-core GPU compared to the M4 MacBook Air, that the M4 Mac Mini doesn't throttle. The fan really helps. And again, as a desktop machine, I don't want to have to deal with thermal throttling or anything like that. I get it if you only have the budget to buy one computer and you are going to travel a lot. M4 MacBook Air makes sense in that situation. You just have to be cautious. If you're doing a lot of this kind of high-end video editing, I'm not having the fan kick on crazy loud. Sometimes it's audible, but... Never really an issue. Not as loud as the Eureka Mini Mate that I am still using as my external drive. Now, I use the Eureka Mini Mate because it's basically designed to fit with the M4 Mac Mini. It's the same size, although it's a little bit thinner. I actually now have it on the top of my M4 Mac Mini so I can turn off and on the uh, machine a little bit easier. That's one of the things that I started to do now is sometimes when I'm gone for a few days and I don't need to access my computer remotely, I will turn the machine off. And when I did the original review on the Orico Mini Mate, I had it on the bottom. And where I have my computer right now on my desk, it's just a pain having that on the bottom. So it made it easier to switch it around. The Orico Mini Mate, I pretty much store everything on it. The file transfers are pretty quick. It's not necessarily as quick as the internal drive now that I've changed it. But again, it lets me keep all of my storage on the Orico Mini Mate and not have to keep it on the internal drive. And that's part of the reason I mention it to where, you know, even with having a two terabyte drive, I still necessarily didn't need a two terabyte drive. I could have upgraded to a one terabyte drive. And if you're someone who doesn't mind memory managing, you may not have to do this whole internal SSD change from a third party manufacturer. You may be fine just using the internal memory, again, memory managing and using an external SSD at all times. I have tons of content on external SSDs too. So I'll leave that in the description below if you're interested in buying external SSDs for the M4 Mac mini. Now let's talk about audio and how I listen to music, watch movies, cut video with the M4 Mac Mini because the built-in speaker is not that great. It's usable in like a worst case scenario, but I wouldn't enjoy watching a movie on it or anything like that. Now, I have two different systems that I use. One is when I'm watching movies, I use this Blue Sound speaker system, and it's all wireless. It hooks up through Bluetooth. The Blue Sound system works really well with Apple computers where they do the delay in the computer to make sure that the audio is coming out at the same time as the video. And it's really important because this is a higher end sound system with bass and everything built in. So it sounds really great, but obviously it's Bluetooth and there can be a little bit of a delay. So if they didn't do this delay, I'd be watching all my videos with a delay and it just wouldn't be enjoyable. So the Blue Sound System has made this really enjoyable because I also don't have to have it plugged into the computer. I just use the wireless Bluetooth options and it hooks up fairly simple. Now, when it comes to editing video, I typically put in my ear pods. There's no delay when I'm doing it wirelessly. And that's one of the things I can't use my blue sound system for because editing video, doing the whole delay thing just doesn't work. So it's great for listening to music, watching videos. I can watch videos online and it does the delay too, but it's really just video editing that it doesn't work where I have to use my AirPods. But in the end, it actually is better that I've used my AirPods because I tend to get my sound levels a little bit better when doing it. So that's where I am six months later with the M4 Mac Mini. It is my workhorse computer. Never anticipated that would be the case, especially for how little I paid. And that's Part of the reason why, although it's not the most professional looking setup, it's very efficient for my needs and it costs me less than getting a Mac Studio, a lot less. And that's why I keep saying the base model M4 Mac Mini is by far still the best value computer here in 2025. So if you have any questions, maybe something I didn't go over today you have a question on, let me know in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name is Jeff Thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you in the next video.